guys. How's everybody doing? We hope you're doing well, and we hope you're, you're taking this time to just enjoy each other, enjoy your family, taking some time to relax and play some fun games. We have some fun stuff for you today, don't we, Coach Primer? Yeah, we do. Um, but as we're at home right now, you know, again, we want to just uh, express our sincere miss for you guys. We actually miss every single one of you guys not being here in, uh, in church on Sundays. Uh, but you know what? This is a great way we can all get together still and have that, uh, that communication. Um, so first things first, I hope all you guys are staying busy, you know, um, playing catch, uh, running around outside, coloring some books, reading the Bible, right? Because um, these, these are some of the things that we need to do to stay focused, um, not to allow this time to be stagnant, which means, you know, we don't want to be boring or just kind of just sit around playing video games. Um, let's use this opportunity to develop a relationship, a solid relationship with God, get to know him at a lot deeper level than what we are, like we talked about last week. Just because we're young, just because, well, I guess they would be young, right? <laughs> just because you guys are young doesn't mean that you guys cannot be used by God. So go ahead and allow yourselves to be built up. Because that's the whole purpose of the foundation that you guys are setting for yourselves with God leading the way is setting a solid foundation. Um, so we want to open up in prayer because remember, at the first, middle, and end of everything we do, we give God the glory. So we want to go ahead and pray right now. So Lord, Father God, we give you all the praise and all the glory, Jesus. We ask that you continue to anoint this time together. Allow everyone's home to be blessed by your hand and your hand alone, Father God. Because you're going to be the one that's going to allow these kids to grow strong, to grow healthy, to stay healthy, so they can proclaim your word, Father God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Have your way here today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. So are you guys ready to have some fun? So this time around, we wanted to bring some fun to you guys. I know that you guys are doing a lot of laying around, sitting on the couch, going from the couch to the kitchen, from the kitchen to the couch. But we wanted to bring some, maybe a little cardio. <laughs> and have you guys do some fun. Do you guys think Coach Primer will do it? First, what's cardio? <laughs> well, we're going to start with worship. And we have some special guests today that some of you know very personally. And they're going to do a fun worship song with you guys. But I need you guys all to get up. Come on, come on, get up. You, 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 I see you. Get up, jump, stretch out a little. Touch your toes, put your hands up in the air, get ready to do some fun worship, and get ready to just have some fun in the Lord. Are you ready? I'm ready. I don't dance. Maybe next time. Let's go.
Hey guys, did you guys have fun doing that worship song? I know I did. Coach Primer didn't want to be in it, but next time we'll get him. And the kids did a great job. And I, a little sweaty because I was telling them how to do the moves. I got pretty exhausted just watching you guys do all that stuff. Remember, cardio, in my opinion, is overrated. But again, my opinion really doesn't carry a lot of weight. So make sure you guys are doing your exercises. <laughs> next time we'll get him in there. But guess what, guys? Now we have something fun for you guys that you guys could do at home, but we're going to do today with our kids here, and we're going to have a little scavenger hunt, and they're going to find some eggs for us, and then we're going to share a little lesson with you guys about the Resurrection Sunday. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. For picking up all those eggs for us. Are you guys tired? Yes. yes. Sweaty? <laughs> well, we appreciate it. And um, we have the 12 eggs that you guys picked up. The resurrection story is very important because it tells us the story of Jesus Christ. And I've been to the store and I've seen a lot of Easter bunnies. I've seen a lot of chocolate covered eggs, a lot of chocolate bunnies. And baskets and just a ton of Easter stuff. But Coach Primer, is that what Easter is about? Well, it's actually not. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Easter bunny is fun. You got a bunch of eggs and all this chocolate and stuff. But Josiah actually had a pretty cool question for me the other day. He asked me what Easter was about or what is Easter? How does that Easter and the Easter bunny, how does that tie in with the resurrection of Jesus? So actually, I don't know if I've told him this story yet, but what the story is Many, many years ago, a lot of people started seeing um, during the springtime, right about this time, a bunch of newborn rabbits that were jumping around. You know, they were hopping around everywhere. Not jumping, I guess jumping and hopping. So we're all over the place. And people started seeing that. They started seeing new blooms. They were seeing flowers that were blossoming. And they saw that as new life. You know, the springtime, right? Springtime, it's new life. Everything comes together. What a lot of people think is they tie that new life with 
Jesus Christ. Why? Because of the resurrection, right? So new life, new beginnings, new everything. But the difference with us as believers, what we know and what we stand on as truth is Jesus Christ is the one true God who did come and rise up. With us believing in him, he actually gives us eternal life. With that eternal life is something that we can hold with all of our hearts because that is truth and that is the purpose of Jesus. That's the purpose of the resurrection as he gave a sacrifice for us, not the Easter Bunny, all right? But don't get me wrong, have fun with the Easter eggs. That's a good time. It's fun to go and run and hide, find some eggs. But again, the whole objective of everything is Jesus Christ. He resurrected. Yeah, sometimes we call those, or we call those traditions, right? That's kind of what the Easter baskets and all that fun stuff is. But the, the resurrection story is very meaningful to us as Christians. So we are going to go through each egg and find out which, what is in them and what Bible verse corresponds to that. Do you guys know all your Bible verses? Mm, not all of them. That's okay. JJ? We... <laughs> We can learn as we get older and study our word, and we'll learn more verses. Okay, Juliana, can you open that? What is in there? A leaf. It is a leaf, and a leaf represents a palm branch. Matthew 21, 9 says, Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Do you guys remember a song saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest? I do. <laughs> okay. Open up number two, Coach Primer. So number two... I hope we know what this is. Number two is, what is this? A dime. Why a dime? How does, a, how does money tie into the resurrection of Jesus? Anybody got an answer to that? Anybody got an answer? Huh? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody want to share up here? Silver coins. Matthew 26, 14 through 15 says, Then one of the twelve called Judas. Who remembers Judas from the Bible? Yes. What do you remember about Judas, Jonah? He betrayed God. Yes. And he betrayed God for what? For money. That's correct. Exactly. What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So that's what our coins represent me, okay? Number three, Last Supper. Who can tell me a little bit about the Last Supper? What is the Last Supper? Jonah, number two. I think I know, but does I know? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Saya? No? Nothing? The Last Supper. Matthew 26, 26 through 28 says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Don't we do this at church? What do we call this, Ethan? Uh, um, what is Communion. Communion. That is correct. Good job, Ethan. Okay. Number four. So number, so number four is this. What is this? It's paper. <laughs> so number four are praying hands. Praying hands. So if you guys reference Matthew 26 through 39. Praying hands. Since I was holding the mic, I'll read it. Matthew 26 to 39 says, He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will, as you will. So again, if we actually start paying attention to all the stories, we've actually heard a lot of these growing up in church. Um, but again, a lot of these stories come from teachings throughout. This is a story from the, from Jesus walking in and coming through and sacrificing his life for us. Again, like uh, Coach Mom said, this is uh, different types of scenarios, different situations that happened, and all of these things had to take place in order for the resurrection to happen. Jesus had to get crucified. He had to have 
He had to walk and get fanned with a palm leaf. He had to get betrayed by Judas. He had to have a last supper with his disciples. And he had to ask God, and he did ask God, say, hey, you know what, God, this isn't for me, man. Help me out. And God said, but Jesus said, hey, you know what, God, if this is your way, let your will be done. Can you open number, can you open number five, Ethan? Ask him what the ropes mean. That is a whip. What does that signify in the resurrection story of Jesus Christ? Uh, that's what they hit him with when he, he was getting crucified. Exactly. I don't know how many of you have watched The Passion of the Christ because I know you guys are young, but I know our kids have watched Passion of the Christ, and it's really sad to see when they're whipping Jesus, and this is an example. And Mark 15:15 15, 15 says, so Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. So that's what the whip means. Number six. What's in there? There's a cross. And we're using that to signify a crown of thorns. Matthew 27, 29 says, When they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. So that's what that signifies, guys. The cross there. Thank you, Jonah. Number seven, Coach Primer. So number seven, Mia, can you open that up? What is that? What is that? Nails. Nails, that's right. What does the nails mean? What do you think it means? Um, when Jesus got nailed up on the cross. That's right. I'm not surprised that you know that because you're really smart, Mia. All right, so that's exactly right. So Matthew 27 to 31 and when they had mocked him, they took the robe from him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. So again, exactly, the nails, that's exactly what it means. They put, they put nails through his hands, through his feet. Again, Jesus was innocent upon, he was without blemish, he was without sin, and they treated him as if he was a, a criminal. He did it for you and me. It's pretty awesome. Yes, that's a great reminder. Number eight. Ooh, Jonah, can you open that and maybe roll it on the table? That's a dice. And that signifies, it's a, uh, from Matthew 27, 35. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Number nine. JJ, you want to help us out and open number nine, please? What's in there? A toothpick. Why do you think there's a toothpick? Did you just eat? You need a toothpick? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> That's a spear. It signifies a spear. John 19, 34 says, But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Ouch. That sounds painful. Yes, put that there. Number 10, Ethan, can you open number 10 up? What is in there? What is that? Oh, show them. Cloth. It's a cloth. And that signifies linen. Matthew 27, 59 says, when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had sewn out of the rock, or what's that word, hone? Out of the rock, and he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. So again, that's linen. Number 11. What's in there, Jonah? Rocks. Rocks. Rocks signify the stone. Matthew 27, 66 says, what does it say, Coach Primer? Pilate said to them, you have a guard. Go, go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. 
So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting on the guard. Yes, and I think I pronounced his name wrong earlier. Number 12, that's the last one of the 12 resurrection eggs. What do you guys think it might be? It's the last one. Mm, close, maybe. What's in there? Juliana? It, it's the... Does my brother know? <laughs> the older brother knows. <laughs> I do know Saya. I do know Saya. Is Jesus' empty uh, tomb? It is. It is Jesus' empty tomb tomb. Matthew 28, 25 says, but the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Amen. Isn't that awesome that through these 12 resurrection eggs, each item can signify something that happened during the story of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. It just, we all have all these items we all have at home and we can all put them in eggs and you guys can tell this story to your friends. Just by using this, this, these eggs and using these items, you guys can go through the Bible verses on each of these sheets and tell the story again to one of your friends, right? Absolutely. So one of the things that you all got to know that we all have to know and we believe in 100% is Jesus came for us. In situations in our lives, Jesus is going to come through and he's preparing us. Right now in these situations that we're coming across, it's not on accident. There's not an accident that, you know, the coronavirus is here. It's not on accident that we're not going to school right now. You know, it's not on accident that situations in the earth are happening. Jesus came and he's preparing us for something great. You guys, we all, you guys at home are definitely part of God's soldiers. You're his warriors. You guys are going to go out into the world and you're going to set foundations. You guys are going to be the light that shines brightest in every situation, in every area that you guys walk, your steps are anointed. Your step are going to be anointed by God. His aroma is going to be with you everywhere you guys go. And I speak that with profound promise that God is with every single one of you guys. So hold on to that truth. And God can do this. And we can put all of our faith and trust in him because he did all of this stuff. Everybody did all of this to him who was innocent. Never did anything wrong. He was perfect but yet they crucified him as a criminal. But because of these things, God loved us so much that he allowed his son, Jesus Christ, to come and be sacrificed for us, that we may have a relationship with Jesus. It ain't a ritual that we do. It's not, um, what did you call it earlier? Uh, it's, it's a relationship that we have with him. It's not just a routine, right? Have faith in that, have trust in that. Amen, preach it, Coach Primer, right guys? Round of applause. <laughs> so we're just excited that you were able to join us as we um, shared this uh, small lesson with our kids. And we hope that it touched your kids' lives and that you guys can share it with others and just share the word and share the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we just want you to be encouraged and we want to continue to pray for you. And we can't wait to have you guys back in Kids Church. We have these kiddos here because they are all cousins. So they are at the same home. So we're, we're all trying our best to practice social distancing and staying home as much as we could. But we wanted to bring this out to you guys and welcome you guys as we taught them. So we hope you enjoyed it. And we just want to close out with prayer. Allow God to be big in your lives, guys. Again, God is amazing. Have that relationship with him. I um, just want to say one quick story real quick that I actually got from um, a really good friend of mine. So it's real quick. So there was this boy who was walking down the street with his dad. And the boy looks up to his dad and he says, Dad, how big is God? 
dad looked at him and said, you know what, son, you see that airplane up there in the sky flying over? And the son looks at him and he says, yeah, I see it, dad. He says, okay, how big is that? He says, oh, it's tiny, dad. It's like this big. I can smash it between my fingers. And I says, okay. So the dad takes him to the airport. So dad tells him, look at that, that airplane, son. How big is it now? And then the son looks at the, at the airplane. He's kind of like, whoa, that's huge. God is that to us. The closer we get to God, the bigger he gets. The bigger he's going to be in our lives. The bigger he's going to be able to move in our lives. So understand that, guys. God may do something great for each and every one of you, for me, for you, for all of you guys at home. Let's love on that. Let's be there. Let's allow God to be huge in our lives, that everywhere we go, people know that there's something different about you in everything that you do, school, sports, at home, right? Cousins, family, friends, you guys be that example. Allow God to be that big in your lives. All right, let's be the difference. Let's start today moving forward to be the changers. So we want to close out. Lord Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the glory, Jesus. You are the one that's going to allow these kids to push through, to push strong, to be big, to be bold for you, Father God. The sacrifice that you came on Resurrection Sunday, you came, Father God, and you stay so true so honest and so pure in your promises father god you are a god of promises you're not a god of guarantees we understand that our faith in you father god is going to allow us to push through any obstacle that we may have that these kids go through i pray you have your hands upon these kids father god and anoint their steps everywhere they go light their path guide their path set people in their lives right now father god that can minister to them that can build them up that can show them and teach them your mighty ways father god and let these kids go out and, you know, preach that to the world, Father. You be the example, Father God. Let these kids know you. Let them seek you with all of their heart. Give them that hunger, that desire to find you. You, Father God, are the one true God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we thank you so much for your sacrifice to us, for us, Father God. To you, to God, be the glory. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. So we appreciate it, guys. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Remember, stay safe, wash your hands, right? And get into your word, guys. Bye, guys. Everybody say bye. Okay, time. Time, time, time. time guys, time, time, time. save it for other.